Hello and welcome to in-depth program. Today's topic of discussion is what are the findings of Global Slavery Index. Points of discussion will be the news, what is the Global Slavery Index, what is modern slavery, country-wise findings, why are the findings of this index contested and practice question. First of all, moving on to the background of the news. Last week, the Global Slavery Index 2023 has been published. According to it, on any given day in 2021, as many as 50 million people were living in modern slavery. Among these 50 million, 28 million suffer from forced labor and 22 million from forced marriages. Of these 50 million, 12 million are children. To be sure, the phrase modern slavery has a specific definition. Now let's discuss what is the Global Slavery Index. The index presents a global picture of modern slavery. It is constructed by Walk Free, a human rights organization and is based on data provided by the global estimates of modern slavery, which in turn is produced by International Labour Organization, Walk Free and International Organization for Migration. This is the fifth edition of the Global Slavery Index and is based on the 2022 estimates. However, the initial estimates are regional and to arrive at country-wise estimates, the index uses several representative surveys. Now let's understand what is modern slavery. According to the index, modern slavery refers to situations of exploitation that a person cannot refuse or leave because of threats, violence, coercion, deception or abuses of power. Modern slavery is an umbrella term and includes a whole variety of abuses such as forced labor, forced marriage, debt bondage, sexual exploitation, human trafficking, slavery-like practices, forced or servile marriage and the sale and exploitation of children. Country-wise findings are, there are three sets of key findings. The first looks at the prevalence of modern slavery. The prevalence refers to the incidence of modern slavery per 1000 population. On this count, the following 10 countries are the worst offenders. North Korea, Eritrea, Mauritania, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, Tajikistan, United Arab Emirates, Russia, Afghanistan and Kuwait. These countries share some political, social and economic characteristics including limited protections for civil liberties and human rights, states the index. Following are the countries with the lowest prevalence. Switzerland, Norway, Germany, Netherlands, Sweden, Denmark, Belgium, Ireland, Japan and Finland. However, apart from prevalence, the index also calculates the countries hosting the maximum number of people living in modern slavery. Here the list is as follows. India, China, North Korea, Pakistan, Russia, Indonesia, Nigeria, Turkey, Bangladesh and United States. Now why are the findings of this index contested? Notwithstanding the regular publication, the index has come in for sharp criticism even from those in the civil society that work on issues such as human trafficking. Bandana Patnayak, international coordinator of the Global Alliance Against Traffic in Women in Thailand says that while authors of the index clearly have very good intentions, they end up depoliticizing the problems and distracting us from the real problems. The way the authors estimate the number of people experiencing modern slavery is partially based on a country's risk score. But the factors that determine a country's risk are many of the same factors that are used to determine whether a country is developed or developing. The so-called statistics presented in the index actually contradict qualitative analysis contained within the body of the report. For example, the index prominently displays the UK as having the strongest government response to modern slavery. Now it's time for the practice question. Which of the following organization releases Global Slavery Index, Walk Free Foundation, United Nations, World Economic Forums or Transparency International? So that's all for today. Stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks for watching.